Hello, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a good day so far or had a good day depending on what time it is. So this video, I get asked all the time on like Instagram or like on Etsy when people buy signature foils from me, logo foils, and now QR code foils, how do you put foils on? And I think a lot of people buy from me and sometimes they think like it's just going to be a sticker or a decal so you could easily put it on. But with foils, they're just this transparent sheet. They were printed, um, black ink, and then it was foiled on for color. So it's just, it's literally on just this transparent sheet. And you're supposed to use clear resin, epoxy resin, to get it to stick on your piece. Just like the other foils, like the these cow foils. I covered it with clear resin, I put them in the resin, and then I let it cure. And they're in here. Not that you can see it so well because it's in the liquid latex now, but it's not in there. We're basically going to be doing the same thing for this. So we're going to be putting it on the back of our piece, and then we're going to be taking clear epoxy resin, pouring it on top. So just in case you don't know much about these foils and why I sell them, so I make signature foils um, and logo foils and now these QR code foils, and they're basically to brand your resin pieces. So they're for resin shops. Um, and resin businesses so they have a chance to be able to brand their pieces with their name with their logo or now with their social media so you can scan your piece and people that bought your piece can go directly to your social media I'll make sure somewhere on this video to put in showing how you scan the QR code you can scan it with your phone like opening the actual camera app or also on Instagram you'll be able to scan it. it'll take you straight to their Instagram because this right here is actually the Instagram QR codes that are used. So yeah, and if you have any questions about anything that I'm saying here throughout the video, feel free to comment it and I'll try to get to you and try to answer it the best I can. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're gonna start mixing up resin. And since this is a bigger piece, I'm going to be doing, um, I wanna say 30, uh, part A and 30 part B, so 60 milliliters of resin in total. Um, and I use two part epoxy resin. I use the Amazing Clear Cast by Illuminite, and I am a affiliate for that brand or for that company. So you can use my code WISHES10 to get 10% off your first order with them. And we'll come back, make sure that you're in a well ventilated area, that you get your gloves on, that you have your mask on, because I'm going to have mine on. And when I come back, everything's, the resin's already gonna be mixed up and we're gonna be ready to start pouring and start adding our foil on there. Okay, so I am back now. I have my gloves and I have my resin mixed up. You wanna make sure, you can see I have bubbles. I usually mix my resin way too fast. You wanna make sure resin really slow. And it also helps if you have like a silicone stick because popsicle sticks can cause more bubbles too, but I'm trying to use all the popsicle, popsicle sticks that I have bought. And you also wanna make sure that your resin's all mixed up so it's not cloudy, it's all clear. You should be able to pick up your resin and be able to see through it. So once you have your resin all mixed up, I put liquid latex on the front part of my piece to protect it from any resin falling off on the back or falling off from the back onto the front. And the hardest part I wanna say about adding this resin foil onto the back is that it's hard to get it centered right in the middle. It's hard to get it to line up with the back or the front. So the front, this is how the front looks, um, how the front looks, but when you turn it to the back, it could be hard to keep it, I guess, centered down in the middle where you turn it over, you want to make sure that it's still aligned. But sometimes you could turn it over and maybe you do this or something and then also you turn it back over and it's like that. So we have our resin mixed up, it has bubbles. I'm going to take a heat gun and try to pop some of those bubbles and then we're going to start pouring on the back of our piece. I am now going to take the resin and before adding the foil onto this, we're going to actually cover it with this clear resin. And you want to pour your resin from a distance, try to pop some of those bubbles if you have any. You want to pour really slow 
but I'm really bad. I guess when it comes to anything with bubbles with resin, I tend to pour fast. I sometimes get down here when I should be pouring higher. So just some things <laughs> to look out for. And when there's a good amount of resin on there, I'm gonna take the heat gun. You can see already some of that resin is trying to fall off. I'm gonna try to push it back some just cause even though I have that liquid latex, I don't really want a lot of resin over spilling. I'm gonna go through it with the heat gun, pop some of those bubbles. And now I'm gonna try to push the resin to the edges, coat those edges. I like to coat the edges first and then get the spots in the middle and add more resin. I just find this is so much easier than coating the whole piece or coating the middle first. Okay. Now that I got them on the sides like that, I'm going to try to pour some more resin to cover up those areas that you see that have kind of like, it's missing resin. And then I'm going to go through it with the heat gun again. And I want to say that some people like to use a torch. I use a heat gun, both have pros and cons. So just make sure whichever one that you use, that you're using it Moderately, we're gonna take our foil and where we see fit in the middle, we're just gonna add it right there. Oops, got some on my gloves there. Good thing I'm wearing gloves. Um, we're gonna push down on our foil. You wanna be careful with a foil not to be rough. You could scratch what's on it off. So just make sure that you're being light, gentle with it. And I'm just pushing resin to cover the foil. And once your foil is covered with resin, this is the time where you try to get it centered in the middle, on the back of your piece, where you want it to be. And once you get in this place, you want to make sure that it stays in this place that you want it. Since sometimes resin foils can shift. Okay, now that I have it kind of centered, kind of where I want it to be, I'm just going to go over it again with a heat gun. That's all you need to do to get your signature foil, your logo foil, your QR foil on the back of your piece. Now it's just a waiting game and making sure that your foil doesn't shift. But mainly you wait a whole day, um, depending on how long it takes for your resin to cure. I know it's 24 to 48 hours for the Maisie Clear Cast to cure fully. And I like to use this container right here to cover my piece to make sure no lint or anything falls on it. Okay, so we are now back the next day and our piece has been cured. You could take off any overspilled resin that you have, get that out of the way. But here's the back of our piece. And what I first like to do is I like to fill around to see if there's anything like sticking up, any lint, especially you want to fill around the foil area here. And right here I can feel that the foil is still sticking up a bit. It may not look like it's a big deal or anything. There you go, you can kind of, you can see it there. So that's sticking up the foil. So what I'm going to do is a second dome. Second dome, I'm literally going to be doing the same thing that I did before, pouring that clear epoxy resin on top, except I don't have to add in a foil like I did for this. So. Okay, so we're back after doing a second dome on the back of this tray here. Um, and the second dome turned out pretty good. We no longer have that QR code foil sticking up, which was the main goal of everything. We did have some more overspill here. So when we take off the liquid latex, we're also we're gonna try to remove some of that overspill. And more than likely, I will have to sand this piece but let's just go ahead and try to take off some of that overspill. Usually when I have overspill, I like to try to take off the overspill first. So I go to where it is and I kind of just pull it off if you can. And if you don't want to use your nails or fingers, you can use pliers. You want to be careful that you don't dig and damage your piece if you do use pliers. And then when you feel like you got most of that overspilled resin off, you could just slowly start 
taking that liquid latex off your piece. And this part can take long depending on how much resin actually covered your liquid latex. I know there's different methods for this for some people, how they get less resin overspill or easier cleanup as like using tape on the sides of it and stuff like that. I honestly haven't tried those. Um, definitely feel free to try stuff and see how it works out better for you. That's how the front looks, all glossy. I'm going to go ahead and wash the piece real quick to remove any stickiness from the liquid latex and then we can look and see at all this overspill okay so i am back with my piece all washed all i did was use some soap and water under my sink and as we can see on the front we have some overspill right here and all on the sides we have overspill all right there so what I like to do at this point is it is now time to sand my piece. And this is a tool that I use to sand my piece. So basically you turn it on, you take this thing, and you go all around it to sand off that um, overspilled resin. So just an example because I'm not going to be doing this for the video. and it sands like that and I keep going and you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated room, that you have your mask on and even goggles because this is basically just breaking down all this resin. So you have resin dust particles all flowing throughout the air and it's not good for you. So just make sure that you're still practicing, practicing safety when you're doing that. I didn't do much there. I just tried to show you a little bit from turning it on. And if you watch my Mar Magic Carp video, I show how I sanded my piece along with how I used UV resin. After you sand your piece, your piece gets like these white marks. I don't know if you can really see that, but basically it gets those like white marks and makes the piece look very matte. So I like to use this UV resin and I basically just take and I pour it all along here and I cure it with my UV flashlight or my UV lamp. Hello, I am back now with my piece all finished here. So as you can see, I already went ahead, I sanded off all that overspilled resin and I domed it with UV resin all on the sides there, as well as the spot here that had overspilled resin. I went ahead and already, I sanded it off and I domed it with UV resin as well. As you can see, it looks good as it is that and then here's the back but yeah the piece is now finished and ready to put in my shop when I get the chance to I just overall hope you enjoyed watching this video that you learned something how to put your QR codes your signature or logo foils on your pieces whether you bought those from me or you bought it from someone else and I'll just see you in the next one bye bye